Today we'll look at how to shoot and edit a time-lapse film. It's easy, but requires a bit of gear. You'll need a camera and a tripod to keep your camera steady, and an intervalometer so you don't have to press the shutter manually. That's all you really need, but it may be worth bringing along an extra lens to change things up, and a neutral density filter if you're shooting during the day. It's never a bad idea to bring extra batteries and an extra SD card, as time-lapse shoots can be power and resource hungry. Finally, you may be sitting around for an hour or so while your intervalometer does your work for you, so you might want to bring a book. When deciding what to shoot, look for subjects that have some movement. Here are some ideas. Whatever you decide, here are a few technical things to consider. First, you generally want to shoot in manual mode with manual focus to avoid letting the camera make decisions in the middle of your shot. An exception here is if the light is changing. For example, you're shooting a sunset. You can try shooting in aperture priority mode instead. Either way, start with a fairly wide depth of field, say between f8 and f16. The interval between your shots depends on a number of things, but for starters, keep your interval short for fast moving subjects and longer for slowing moving subjects. For the sunset, I'm going with about 10 seconds between shots. Finally, aesthetics are subjective, but do give the same compositional consideration to your time-lapse footage as you would to still photographs. Once you've framed up, set your focus, and triggered your shutter, get comfortable, because you're going to be here for a while. Okay, now that the warmth has crept back into my fingers, it's time to edit. We'll start in Lightroom, where a good trick is to select a shot from the middle of your sequence to edit, then sync those edits to the rest of the sequence, which we'll look at in a moment. Again, aesthetics are subjective and it's up to you to find your style, but one edit you may want to make is to crop your shots to 16 to 9 for use in video if your camera is naturally shooting 4 to 3. Beyond that, go nuts. Once you're reasonably pleased with the edit, go ahead and select the entire sequence and you'll see this sync button appear over here. Go ahead and click it. And in this case, we want to sync all edits to all photos. Here we can confirm that the first picture in our sequence and the last picture in our sequence have both been edited. We'll need to export our photos as JPEG in order to bring them into Premiere. With the entire sequence selected, go to File, Export. You can choose to export however and wherever you like, but do be sure to export with a custom name sequence. This will be important in the next step. The rest of these settings are up to you. For this, I kept the JPEG quality at 70 for no particularly good reason, and I didn't sharpen because I already had sharpened during the edit. Once you click export, go grab an adult beverage because this may take a while. Now in a fresh Premiere project, go to File, Import, and navigate to the folder that you exported your footage to. Select the first image, and if you had Lightroom sequence them like I told you to, you should be able to check this little box that says Image Sequence, and that will bring the entire sequence in, saving us a bit of time and trouble. Premiere assumes a frame rate of 30 frames per second. But if you want your sequence to run at a different rate, like say you have some footage that's 24 FPS in the same piece, you can right click, go to modify and interpret footage, and then just change this to 24 frames per second. Go ahead and drag your footage onto the timeline to create a sequence. And that's pretty much it, you're ready to watch. Well, almost. It'll need to render out a little bit, but I'll do that all in fast forward here so that you don't have to sit and wait. And that should do it. Next time we'll take a look at adding some camera movement to these sequences and sort of freshening things up a little bit, making them a little bit more interesting. But for now, go out and shoot and practice and have fun. 